Do you ever just want to scream and then realise that you don't have a mouth? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Fashion with Luna. I don't know. Um, to tell you the complete truth, I um, have been trying to acquire an angle. I'm really not good at angles at all and this audio is going to be terrible. But I think I actually have to get up off the floor now and go start cooking. I'm not really sure what footage I'm going to use, but I had a nice time taking pictures outside. It was actually quite nice being outside. I kind of just want to go straight to bed now, but I do need to take out my contacts so that I don't get habanero eyeballs and go blind and die. But for quite some time, I just can't figure out what angle to do. So... We're gonna go with this one for now. Um, really what I wanted to do was some sort of outfit video, but it seems that my brain's just like, hmm, I'm not really sure if we're going to be able to do that. So now I'm like, all oh, right, so we're sitting here and, uh, <laughs> the skies are blue outside. I actually kind of wanted to go outside and then I was thinking, well, really, the last thing I want to do at this present moment is interact with anybody. So I've decided that instead I just stay inside, but I really want to get some Skittles. And then I was like, well, what could we do inside? And then I was like, I could show you the outfit I'm wearing today. I actually thought it would be really fun to do like a style one particular item in a bunch of different ways but the highlight i think of this outfit today is the sort of jester-esque i'm shouting the jester-esque shoes and a socks so i've got one black shoe on and one sort of maroon shoe on and i've got one black sock on and one maroon-ish sock on and it's supposed to whoo, tie into the rest of the outfit which can you see it maybe not i really like these sleeves i'm actually wearing the same top and over scored over scored over skirt type thing in the first video i filmed and on that day i found a rose in the trash can which was insane and very lucky because this is covered in roses but to be able to see my head i have to lean back and uh that's just difficult but I could just scoot back, but my wire here is not very long. And I thought it would be fun to... <laughs> I don't know. Why do I feel so defeated? Okay. Maybe it's just that I'm not actually in the mood to speak. And here I am. Speaking. Okay, maybe, maybe the floor is... Not better. I can lie on the floor. Oh, I, oh, actually, that's a lot better. But not exactly sure where my tripod is. Um, I actually think it might be in my car, but I don't want to go get it from the car. So, may oh. maybe instead of tripoding, I could just hold you hello hi oh oh wait this is not this is not so bad okay i like this but i wish you could see my shoe <laughs> oh maybe that's okay i'm not looking at the camera though i'm probably just gonna delete this i really i love fashion and i i don't know i'm always like oh i want to do one of those like 10 outfits for spring videos and then i'm like well i i don't want to have to get changed so many times <laughs> but um let me put you down for a sec now that the sun is pouring in it's very toasty in here but just a sec 
I have returned with the surprise. It's not a surprise. Welcome to today's activity. Which is basically just a kit. Um, it's from Japan. And Kinoko no Yama, I am definitely Kinoko no Yama ha, as opposed to Takenoko no Sato ha. Um, I love Kinoko no Yama. It's probably one of my favorite snacks ever, maybe? Probably. Probably. Um, also, I have the mic on the Windex, and uh, the lighting is just like so all over the place. But, uh. <sighs> Anywho, um, I actually brought this back with me when I moved back from Japan and I, that was, oh my gosh, I, it's not quite been a year yet, but, um, technically this is expired, <laughs> but let's open it, let's see, ah, the bottle. I've been saving it and this is like the last snack that I had saved so it comes with a mold um ato kara cracker wo ireru no de choco wa suku nami ni irete ne so it's like afterwards you're gonna put the cracker in so make sure you don't fill it quite all the way um <laughs> this is just like kasa <laughs> is it an umbrella question mark okay um so here's the thing though it comes with the chocolate which i have this is this hot enough still i've got this hot water and you've got to submerge it in the hot water dump those in there i feel like this is i really should be doing this from another angle but i guess it's okay I should probably just not worry so much, you know. <laughs> That'd probably be good. Okay, I guess I could. We could do a little reading of the back. あ、チョコチューブを温めてね。チョコが柔らかくなったら <laughs> While it's still warm, see, it's kind of squishy, but it's not quite squishy enough yet. So, oh, wait, I'm gonna put it back in there. How's the white chocolate one doing? That actually seems pretty okay. Nezoko Oh, okay, the water is actually quite hot. Let me get my... Okay, they're so cute. This is terrible framing because you cannot see. But that's okay. Do, do. I just want to... No, no. <laughs> I guess I'll do a normal one first. Well, you totally can't see this. Darn. Okay. One has been filled. I think I'm gonna do this next one. Uh, with a few different weight. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll wipe this off. This one? Uh, it's not. No! Yeah, I just want to eat them. This is not going well. Mm. I feel like this snack is honestly carried by the cracker. Okay, I'm kind of drying off the strawberry one. I'm just wiping it on my leg. <laughs> I feel like I'm in such a hurry. But I don't really need to be. Uh oh. <laughs> I overfilled that one. Wait, look it. Uh, I 
it's exploded. There are so many cracker. I just popped them into the fridge so we'll see how it goes and then I'll take them out. Can I read you a story? So the audio on this isn't gonna be perfect but did you know that the original Cinderella had quite a bit of blood in it? Welcome to today's small segment of reading with Luna. If you ever wanted to hear the original Cinderella now's your chance. A rich man's wife fell sick and feeling that her end was near she called her only daughter to her bedside and said dear child be good and say your prayers God will help you and I shall look down on you from heaven and always be with you. With that she closed her eyes and died. Every day the little girl went out to her mother's grave and wept, and she went on being good and saying her prayers. When winter came, the snow spread a white cloth over the grave, and when spring took it off, the man remarried. His new wife brought two daughters into the house. Their faces were beautiful and lily white, and their hearts were ugly and black. That was the beginning of a bad time for the poor stepchild. Why should this silly goose sit in the parlour with us, they said. People who want to eat bread must earn it. Get into the kitchen where you belong. They took away her fine clothes and gave her an old grey dress and wooden shoes to wear. Look at the haughty princess in her finery, they cried, and laughing led her to the kitchen. From then on, she had to do all the work getting up before daybreak, carrying water, lighting fires, cooking and washing. And in addition, the sisters did everything they could to plague her. They jeered at her and poured peas and lentils into the ashes so that she had to sit there picking them out. At night, when she was tired out with work, she had no bed to sleep in but had to lie in the ashes by the hearth. And they took to calling her Ash Puddle because she always looked dusty and dirty. One day when her father was going to the fair, he asked his two stepdaughters what he should bring them. Beautiful dresses, said one. Diamonds and pearls, said the other. And you, Ash Puddle, what would you like? Father, she said. Break off the first branch that brushes against your hat on your way home and bring it to me. So he brought beautiful dresses, diamonds and pearls for his two stepdaughters. And on the way home, as he was riding through a copse, a hazel branch brushed against him and knocked off his hat. So he broke off the branch and took it home with him. When he got home, he gave the stepdaughters what they had asked for and gave Ashputtle the branch. After thanking him, she went into her mother's grave and planted the hazel sprig over it and cried so hard that her tears fell on the sprig and watered it. It grew and became a beautiful tree. Three times a day, Ashputtle went and sat under it and wept and prayed. Each time, a little white bird came and perched on the tree, and when Ashputtle made a wish, the little bird threw down what she had wished for. Now it so happened that the king arranged for a celebration. It was to go on for three days, and all the beautiful girls in the kingdom were invited, in order that his son might choose a bride. When the two stepsisters heard they had been asked, asked they were delighted. They called Ashputtle and said, comb our hair, brush our shoes and fasten our buckles. We're going to the wedding at the king's palace. Ashputtle obeyed, but she wept, for she too would have liked to go dancing, and she begged her stepmother to let her go. You little sloven, said the stepmother. How can you go to a wedding when you're all dusty and dirty? How can you go dancing when you have neither dress nor shoes? But when Ashputtle begged and begged, the, fi the stepmother finally said, Here, 
I've dumped a bowl full of lentils in the ashes. If you can pick them up in two hours, you may go. The girl went out the back door to the garden and cried out, O oh, tame little doves, O oh, turtle doves, and all the birds under heaven, come and help me put the good ones in the pot, the bad ones in your crop. Two little white doves came flying through the kitchen window, and then came the turtle doves, and finally all the birds under heaven came flapping and flattering and settled down by the ashes. The doves nodded their little heads and started in, peck, 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 and all the others started in, peck, 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 and they sorted out all the good lentils and put them in a bowl. Hardly an hour had passed before they finished and flew away. Then the girl brought the bowl to her stepmother, and she was happy, for she thought she'd be allowed to go to the wedding. But the stepmother said, No, Ashputtle, you have nothing to wear, and you don't know how to dance, and the people would only laugh at you. When Ashputtle began to cry, the stepmother said, If you can pick two bowlfuls of lentils out of the ashes in an hour, you may come. And she thought, she'll never be able to do it. But she had dumped the two bowlfuls of lentils in the ashes. Ashputtle went out the back door to the garden and cried out, O oh, tame little doves, O oh, turtle doves, and all the birds under heaven, come and help me put the good ones in the pot and the bad ones in your crop. The two little white doves came flying through the kitchen window, and then came the turtle doves, and finally all the birds under heaven came flapping and fluttering and settled down by the ashes. The doves nodded their heads and started in, peck, 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 and all the others started in, peck, 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 and they sorted out all the good lentils and put them in the bowls. Before half an hour had passed, they had finished and they all flew away. Then the girl brought the balls to her stepmother, and she was happy, for she thought she'd be allowed to go to the wedding. But her stepmother said, It's no use, you can't come, because you have nothing to wear and you don't know how to dance. We'd only be ashamed of you. Then she turned her back and hurried away with her two proud daughters. When they had all gone out, Ashpuddle went to her mother's grave. She stood under the hazel tree and cried. Shake your branches, little tree, throw gold and silver down on me. Whereupon the bird tossed down a gold and silver dress and slippers embroidered with silk and silver. Ashputtle slipped into the dress as fast as she could and went to the wedding. Her sisters and stepmothers didn't recognise her. She was so beautiful in her golden dress that they thought she must be the daughter of some foreign king. They never dreamed it could be Ashputtle, for they thought she was sitting at home in her filthy rags, picking lentils out of the ashes. The king's son came up to her, took her by the hand and danced with her. He wouldn't dance with anyone else and he never let go of her hand. But when someone else asked for a dance, he said, she is my partner. She danced until evening, and then she wanted to go home. The king's son said, I'll go with you, I'll see you home. For he wanted to find out whom the beautiful girl belonged to. But she got away from him and slipped into the dove coat. The king's son waited until her father arrived, and told him the strange girl had slipped into the dove coat. The old man thought, could it be Ashputtle? And he sent for an axe and a pick and broke into the dove coat, and there was no one inside. When they went indoors, Ashputtle was lying in the ashes in her filthy clothes, and a dim oil lamp was burning on the chimney piece. For Ashputtle had slipped out the back end of the dove coat and run to the hazel tree. There she had taken off her fine clothes and put them on the grave, and the bird had taken them away. Then she had put her grey dress on again, crept into the kitchen and lain down in the ashes. Next day, when the festivities started in 
again, and her parents and stepsisters had gone. Ashpatal went to the hazel tree and said, Shake your branches, little tree, the gold and silver down on me. Whereupon the bird threw down a dress that was even more dazzling than the first one. And when she appeared at the wedding, and when she appeared at the wedding, everyone marvelled at her beauty. The king's son was waiting for her. He took her by the hand and danced with no one but her. When others came and asked her for a dance, he said, She is my partner. When evening came, she said she was going home. The king's son followed her, wishing to see which house she went into, but she ran away and disappeared into the garden behind the house, where there was a big beautiful tree with the most wonderful pears growing on it. She climbed among the branches as nimbly as a squirrel, and the king's son didn't know what had become of her. He waited until her father arrived and said to him, The strange girl has got away from me, and I think she has climbed up in the pear tree. Her father thought, Could it be Ash Buttle? He sent for an axe and chopped the tree down, but there was no one in it. When they went into the kitchen, Ashputtle was lying there in the ashes as usual, for she had jumped down on the other side of the tree, brought her fine clothes back to the bird in the hazel tree, and put on her filthy grey dress. On the third day, after her parents and sister had gone, Ashputtle went back to her mother's grave and said to the tree, Shake your branches, little tree. Throw gold and silver down on me. Whereupon the bird Whereupon the bird threw down a dress that was more radiant than either of the others, and the slippers were all gold. When she appeared at the wedding, the people were too amazed to speak. The king's son danced with no one but her, and when someone else asked her for a dance, he said, She is my partner. When evening came, Ashbuttle wanted to go home, and the king's son said he'd go with her, but she slipped away so quickly he couldn't follow. But he had thought of a trick. He had arranged to have the whole staircase brushed with pitch, and as she was running down it, the pitch pulled her left slipper off. The king's son picked it up, and it was tiny and delicate and all gold. Next morning, he went to the father and said, No girl shall be my wife, but the one this golden shoe fits. The sisters were overjoyed, for they had beautiful feet. The eldest took the shoe to her room and tried it on, and her mother went with her. But the shoe was too small, and she couldn't get her big toe in. So her mother handed her a knife and said, Cut your toe off. Once you're queen, you won't have to walk any more. The girl cut her toe off, forced her foot into the shoe, gritted her teeth against the pain, and went out to the king's son. He accepted her as his bride-to-be, lifted her up on his horse, and rode away with her. But they had to pass the grave. The two doves were sitting in the hazel tree, and they cried out, Ruku, Ruku, there's blood in the shoe. The foot's too long, the foot's too wide. That's not the proper bride. He looked down at her foot and saw the blood spurting. At that, he turned his horse around and took the false bride home again. No, he said, this isn't the right girl. Let her sister try on the shoe. The sister went to her room and managed to get her toes into the shoe, but her heel was too big. So her mother handed her a knife and said, Cut off a chunk of your heel. Once you're queen, you won't have to walk any more. The girl cut off a chunk of her heel, forced her foot into the shoe, gritted her teeth against the pain, and went out to the king's son. He accepted her as his bride-to-be, lifted her up on his horse, and rode away with her.
as they passed the hazel tree, the two doves were sitting there, and they cried out, Raku, Raku, there's blood on the shoe, the foot's too long, the foot's too wide, that's not the proper bride. He looked down at her foot and saw the blood was spurting from her shoe and staining her white stockings all red. He turned his horse around and took the false bride home again. This isn't the right girl either, he said. Haven't you got another daughter? No, said the man. There's only a punny little kitchen drudge that my dead wife left me. She couldn't possibly be the bride. Send her up, said the king's son, but the mother said, Oh, no, she's much too dirty to be seen. But he insisted, and they had to call her. First she washed her face and hands, and when they were clean, she went upstairs and curtsied to the king's son. He handed her the golden slipper and sat down on a footstool, took her foot out of her heavy wooden shoe and put it into the slipper. It fitted perfectly. And when she stood up and the king's son looked her into her face, he recognised the beautiful girl he had danced with and cried out, This is my true bride. The stepmother and the two sisters went pale with fear and rage, but he lifted Ashputtel onto his horse and rode away with her. As they passed the hazel tree, the two white doves called out, Raku, Raku, no blood in the shoe. Her foot is neither long nor wide. This one is the proper bride. Then they flew down and alighted on Ashputtel's shoulders, one on the right and one on the left. And there they sat. On the day of Ashputtel's wedding, the two stepsisters came and tried to ingratiate themselves and share in her happiness. On the way to church, the elder was on the right side of the bridal couple and the younger on the left. The doves came along and pecked out one of the elder sister's eyes and one of the younger sister's eyes. Afterward, on the way out, the elder was on the left side and the younger on the right, and the doves pecked out both the remaining eyes. So both sisters were punished with blindness to the end of their days for being so wicked and false. The end. Bye. Okay. Wee. Wait. I feel like the light from the fridge is so good, but I can't leave the fridge open. Look at. Got this one. Ardemo. Welcome to today's edition of Life Lessons with Luna. If 
you're going to be cutting habaneros and you wear contacts, make sure you take out your contacts before you chop the habaneros. Unless it's going to be like eight hours or something after, but I'm going to need to take out my contacts tonight. So I don't want to have pepper spicy eyeballs because I'd prefer not to go blind and be in this severe pain. But the main downside to just having my camera on me is that I can't actually capture decent audio. It really is too bad. Maybe if, if you're really close. Hello. This is way too close. Maybe the audio is not a horrific, but I think it's pretty horrific. I just want to lie on the floor for the rest of the day. Sounds good to me. big fan of the floor. I like sitting on the floor, lying on the floor, doing stuff on the floor. Sleeping on the floor is... Well, my mattress is on the floor. Maybe someday I'll get a bed frame. Actually, hmm. Maybe not, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. It's been a while since I had one. I actually, I loved my bed in Japan. It's like a loft bed, it was just built into the apartment that way. And underneath it was my closet. And on the side of it, it had shelving. It's quite convenient. I thought about that I might not like having a loft bed because I always have to pee in the middle of the night because I drink obscene amounts of amounts of water. But it's actually, it was really not bad. And the ladder was, was pretty good, so. Even if I did have to pee in the middle of the night, it was okay. Do I seem very sleepy? I think I'm very sleepy. You know, I could just sleep 24 seven. This is not a good idea, but sometimes I'm just like, can I just go to sleep for the next 72 hours. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's it's not an option. Okay, I should get up before I really don't want to get up. Oh, I went outside and I took pictures of the blossoms. I love seeing what's in bloom and then yeah I was like oh maybe I'll just pretend to be a photographer <laughs> and take pictures of like the trees and the blossoms and the flowers. There were some daffodils and I found some tulips but they were kind of sad looking so that's too bad. But, what else did I see? There was this one tree that had berries on it. Probably poisonous. But, they were nice. Very red. Mmm, what else was there? I think there might be some dogwood trees around, but they are not blossoming yet. And the cherry blossoms those are gone although i think there's actually another variety that'll bloom but i'm i'm not exactly sure oh no back to the okay luna it's time to get up you can do it i've already chopped the onions chopped them earlier this week and um, that was actually sort of a disastrous decision because then the fridge proceeded to smell like onion. Usually I won't chop the whole onion but I was like what if I just do and then I did and I sort of regret it. Okay. 
got to take out my eyeballs and then cook. I don't know if I really want to film any of the cooking process. I really like being silent while cooking sometimes. Although sometimes I'm like, I wish I could just have a cooking show. <laughs> Welcome to Cooking with Luna. But um, I feel like that would be really fun if you're... I, I don't know. So I was talking about having a potential, potentially having a cooking with Luna and that would be really fun. If you had a friend who you're like really comfortable being silly around, but that friend will be, I don't know, you're really comfortable, like both being in front of them and in front of the camera. So if they, but also a friend who really wanted to film you, I feel like that's just not normal. Is that normal? Like, uh, are, do, do you know, are you a friend who, um, like, are you friends with anyone who you'd just be like, oh yeah, it'd be fun to film you or take pictures of you. I don't know, I feel like that just, I don't know, if you're with a friend, like, that, doesn't that seem like such a chore or like a job? Must they're really into like videography? Wish I could figure out this whole uh I'm really not good at angles at all and this this oh audio is going to be terrible but I think I actually have to get up off the floor now and go start cooking. I'm not really sure what footage I'm going to use, but I had a nice time taking pictures outside. It was actually quite nice being outside. I kind of just want to go straight to bed now, but I do need to take out my contacts so that I don't get habanero eyeballs and go blind and die. Oh, also, stick around for the many other things that <laughs> will happen here eventually now.